Hey guys, Chris here at PTTT120. Uh, today we're going to have a quick look at um, fitting a stair life to uh, Hornby's TT120 A4s. Um, this is not the uh, super detailed um, version that Richard Bayliss does at This Way Works, um, where you get all the lighting and <clears throat> that kind of stuff, and, uh, and you, you don't even notice that this, he's put a stay alive in there because he he actually just moves all the components around because there's loads of space in there uh, but it takes quite a bit of work a bit of hard wiring to get it so it looks like there's nothing going on this is the old-fashioned way where we're going to cut out some of the coal and uh, and and fit it in there and then redress the coal space okay but we're going to do it neatly and we're going to do it well Okay, we're not just going to tear a great big hole in the top and stick the stay alive on top and then pile up a huge pile of coal because um, that just looks a mess. Um, um, it works, but it doesn't look very good, does it? So we're going to have a little quick look at that. Um, we'll get straight into it, shall we? Right, guys, so what we're going to do now is uh, I'll show you how to, in a very quick time, fit... HM7000 decoder and compatible um, a Hornby stay alive into your mallard. Okay, um, I've chosen the mallard because I've got one, but also because the actual um, tender uh, on the non corridor A4, Hornby A4s, the TG120, um, is the narrowest. Okay, so this is the most challenging one. Um, here's um, the a corridor version and it is about I think it's about um, yeah it's it's three mil wider you have a lot more playroom inside one of those corridors basically the width of the corridor pipe in there is the extra width of this um, of this tender uh, which means you have a lot more it's, it's a lot easier fit but um, I want to show you how to do it on the more difficult one okay um, so let's get started. Let's we'll, let's put those to one side for a moment. We'll need to open up the back, all right? As per the instructions that come with the um, every one of the locos, whether they're it's in the um, in the set or um, if you're buying an individual one, same for the digital and the non-digital, or pre-fitted. Okay. Now, next thing we need to look at. I mean, that one's almost falling off already. Is the tabs now? There are tabs at the end. I'll show you again on this one. It's this bright light grey. I'm missing. Now these tabs they actually work um, by moving um, left and right. Okay, but that's that's how they actually operate. If you want to get them in and out, right? So you basically you need to give them a little bit of pressure either way, um, pushing left and right with these, and eventually they. They pop out like that and they and you don't break them unlike if you just try and prise them off you break them okay that's, there we go next thing we want to do is we're going to obviously take off the uh the um blanking plate for the hm7000 uh, then we are going to put uh the hm1000 chip in touching the edges i've earthed myself as well um i've got a um, a steel deck just behind me, which I've used to earth myself, and then we're going to find, I feel, there it is, and I'm just going to use the, the foil bag, push down on, there you go, that's that done. Right, we've now got the HM7000 fitted. Next thing we're going to do is, uh, let's just put that to one side, right, okay, so this, now, the plan is, is we're going to open the um, the stay alive up, okay, and we are going to uh, make it fit in this space. We need a little bit of help, and we're going to get that by creating a new coal area. Now, this coal area is really quite low, right, and um, if you look at a lot of pictures of a lot of locos, you will see that actually you can even see the coal uh, heaped up high enough here. Now, I am... Um, I've never seen the coal higher than the actual um, than, than the um, curved 
parts of the bodywork. So we are aiming at keeping the coal below that. Um, I've seen models of coal higher than that, but I don't really like that. It looks a bit daft. But we're going to keep the coal lower than those hoops. Okay. Um, first thing we need to do is remove this coal panel from this part of the body. Uh, as you can see, it's actually it's actually a separate component. It's not molded separately. Um, some of them will already be loose. There we go. That one's loose. Some of them uh, have more glue inside them. Okay. And all you need to do is very carefully, very gently, go in with a scalpel, and you will, if you go along, you'll hear crack, crack, and the same there, crack, crack, and then. That one's already cracked. Okay, and then you can see that the sides are now bowing, and that's pretty much free. We need to help the help this end where the screw holes are. Okay, and we're going to go in there again with the scalpel to hear a crack. Okay, and that's enough. We've done enough work. Now you can very gently push down on there. Okay, and out she comes. <laughs> bom, bom, bom. Ta -da! Right, I'll put this roughly in place so you get the gist of where we're actually going to be. Uh, now the plan is is that we are going to put the stay alive uh, sat in here and across. Now that we have a couple of issues though. First of all, uh, well, let's let's don't jump the gun, Chris. Right, let's carefully open the back of one of these. All right, so. Pick the, the side where you've got the straight edge, not the one with the bump, bubbly one is, okay? Because there's nothing here to damage, right? You, well, there are, but uh, not near the surface, okay? So very carefully, cut along there like that, and using the edge of the board, the inside edge of the board, as a guide, and then out it comes. Ta -da! Okay, a couple of things now we need to do is, one of the issues we have that you don't have with the corridor is that um, the inside shape of here, okay, is 18 and a half, okay, and the width of this board, okay, is 19. So we need to shave half a mil off, okay, which actually isn't that difficult, all right. But what we're going to do first is we're going to um, remove this cable because we don't need this much cable, there's too much in the way. We can, and we also we want to um, sand uh, a little bit off the edges, so we're going to take this cable off um, with the soldering iron. Okay, so we're just going to, um, by a little pressure, I hold the cable with my those fingers, this finger, and then we're going to apply a little bit of heat on there, pop a little bit of heat on that, pop. There we go. All right, the red to the front. Okay. Now, what do we do with this? Well, we are very going to very carefully go in here and open this up okay all right we need to um uh, very carefully you can just if you do use a pair of pliers near the front that way you're not putting too much pressure actually on this connection here and you don't want to be faffing about doing it loads of different loads of times okay be confident and have a go okay but um commit yourself to it because you don't want to be pulling them backwards and forwards okay and we're going to go now this one to come up this one has to come up a little bit higher we're going to push uh from the underside a little bit like that that we can bring this one up okay. because we need to get these um, yeah get the radiuses there we are. because this needs to get inside of there okay so we need to get that narrower right now with like I said with the um, the the corridor coach one it's not, it's not so much of a problem but it just slots in there easily we now need to take um a quarter of a mil off either side which i'm going to do um off camera with a file okay okay what we've got um yeah so 
18.17, so that's easily going to fit in the eight and a half space. Okay. Uh, now we're going to put, um, we're going to reduce this cable. Easy to reduce it by half. You could probably reduce it by more, but it's not necessary. There's enough space. Okay, so we will just um, take the end off of those. Okay, uh, soldering iron back on. Tin the ends of these bad boys. Okay, just a little bit. Already been there we go, and then <coughs> we're going to put uh, black to the back, red to the front. Okay, perfect. Right, turn the soldering iron off because that's not needed anymore. Bom, bom, bom. Put it somewhere I'm not going to burn myself. Thank you very much. Okay, right, so um, now we're going to, that's going to live in there. Okay, uh, what we need to do next is we need, well, there's a few little bits because we obviously we need to insulate this before we do anything else. Right, back in the room. Okay, so we'll start down the bottom there, where it's important. It'll all come, it'll all come obvious. Right, okay, so now that's done. Okay, we'll roll over, put the screws back in. Okay, so that's now, uh, that's all where you want it to be. Okay, and we're going to try and push, now we push this down a little bit more than where it is at the moment. All right, okay. That's it. Okay, and what we're going to do on these high points, we're going to apply just a little bit of PVA. The re coaling doesn't all just roll off of these high points. Okay, so we're just going to have a little bit of glue on some of those high points just so that we can easily cover them. All right. We also, at this stage, need to put just a few little bits of tissue. Where appropriate, just to tuck that into that corner and the opposing corner, and this just helps plug it so that we don't get lots and lots of bits of fine bits of coal disappear down the bottom. Okay, so we plug that in down there. Good. So I might do a little bit. Yeah. There you go. Right, so next job is ballast it up. Now I'm using uh, from Woodland Scenics fine cinders because um, I quite like it. It's a very fine coal. Um, <coughs> you might want a rougher coal. Okay, that's okay. Feature is um, 
come back, go back in there and paint the top of that bit black first, um, which is what I'll do later. Right, um, we need a little bit of isopropyl alcohol so that everything runs nicely where we want it to be and doesn't blow off and disappear. Okay, and then we're going to go in with a bit of ballast, a bit of ballast bond. We're just going to go in there like that. Just do it. Okay. Right. We leave that to dry. Okay. It's so the next morning, and we're going to have. Let's uh, let's let's see whether uh, let's see how easy it is to take apart. Okay. And that's probably going to have a little bit of resistance because of the adhesive um, on the double sided, which we are going to remove. Okay. Right. What we're going to do is I'll take that off carefully. Okay. I'm just going <coughs> to remove that. And then we're going to unplug, unplug this. Okay, so now just it's a little bit of clean up time. Okay, next thing to do. Once we've got rid of all those little bits of adhesive off there, okay, Get nice and clean and tidy. A um, little bit of black insulating tape. Start the tape um, down here. So one thing we need to do uh, very quickly is. Um, obviously this this plastic part of the original um, component of the tender is no longer actually stuck to anything other than it's stuck to the, the coal which is stuck to the tender that's not quite enough so oh, too much I'm going to put a little bit of glue along a little bit of styrene cement Along that edge, oh, it's not in camera, is it? just like a little bit of styrene glue, um, just down that edge there. There we go. Let that dry, let that dry, dry off a minute or two. Okay, put this one the correct way back in. Plug it in down there. Obviously, you can't push down the coal anymore. <laughs> that would be a disaster, darling. Okay, is that going in? Yeah, that's gone in. Okay, yeah, it's gone in. Okay, this will screw it back up and test it. Right, ready for a test. Right, let's uh, let's see if it works. Okay, so <laughs> right, so we've got um... <laughs> fantastic. I love that sound. Right, um, so let's have a little quick make sure that everything's operational. And a little reverse while we're at it. Uh, 
And back again. I can stop that, but what we will do though is now we'll take it off of there. We'll do some whistles. Brakes. In the top. Get coal shoveling. Put a wheel slip. Put it back on the track. No loss of connectivity. And off she goes. <laughs> right. Very happy with that. Right, so um, that worked for me uh, brilliantly. Uh, so much so. <laughs> I did two. <laughs> These are all going to get paint jobs at some point in the future when I've got time for them. Um, now, one thing that I would do slightly differently is when I was when I'm dressing the um, the coal in the back um, and using the cling film, I wouldn't bother with taping all around the outside. I would just lay cling film all over that kit, put the um, the tender back on, fill up the coal. Do the do the the work with the uh, the IPA and the, um, the ballast bonds. Let it go off. Take it off. Um, the the polish the the um, cling film would come off with the tender. Trim it all out, and no mucking about with trying to get the adhesive off, which made taking the tender off quite awkward, if I'm honest. Um, so I I wouldn't bother with the double siding bit. Edit that bit out. In fact. I will probably put a comment on in there saying, don't bother with the with this. Okay, well, you would have already seen it by now. <laughs> right, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, hope you find it useful. Uh, if you do, uh, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, ring the little bell, poke Peach in the face, and there should be a couple of videos here and here. All the best, take care. Bye-bye.